Amen. It is good to be back in this place. Amen. It's good to see each of you this morning. And uh, you go ahead and turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel uh, chapter 21. We want to thank Robin for that song. Keith, musicians, thank you all so much uh, for the music today. You know, uh, the messages that God has been laying on my heart were times when we were, I think, going through, and we're still going through it, this COVID. And you know, it's not letting up. You know, as uh, we're living in days, what I say, the, the title of the message today is Desperate Days. And there's a giant... Is a giant called desperation, and we all face it. There's times when we just feel so, so desperate, but we know there's a God who cares and a God who's there with us. In our world, we see these, these difficult days. Uh, many of you are facing challenges. You know friends. You know people who are facing challenges. Some are scared. Others feel alone. But we don't have to go far to find people in desperation, do we? My mom always told me this, son, no matter how bad you have it, you'll always find somebody who has it worse than you do. And you do. Now, does that make you feel better about your situation? Not really. Because everybody's situation, you know, I mean, we feel like it's, it's bad, and it is. But you can find other folks who are struggling and going through. You know, David here was in days of desperation. He was running. He was on the run. <laughs> And we're, let's look at the together. Let's stand in honor of God's Word. And we're going to start with the verses uh, 1 through 3 of chapter 21. Now David came to Nob, to Ahimelech, the priest. And Ahimelech was afraid when he met David. And said to him, Why are you alone and no one is with you? So David said to Ahimelech the priest, The king has ordered me on some business. And said to me, Do not let any." send you, or which I have commanded you. And I have directed my young men to such and such a place. Now therefore, what have you on hand? Give me five loaves of bread in my hand, or whatever can be found. Father God, as we open up your word today, speak your words of truth to us. Move me out of the way, Lord. Speak your words of truth through me today. Not my words, God, but your words. And Father, we give you praise as we learn a lesson and so, Lord, now we just pray. We just pray that we're not just be hearers, but we'll be doers of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. As we begin today, we, we start off with a section, and if you're taking notes, you have that on the back of your uh, order of service today. But start off with David's lie. David comes to the city of Nob. Now, why is this significant? The city of Nob was what they called the city of priests. Now, if you're in refuge, isn't that probably where you want to run? <laughs> yeah. He ran to a city that had over 80 priests. That's pretty significant in, that, in those days. That's probably like us. We're thinking about Baptist churches on just about one on every corner. If you think about the South, that's pretty much the way it is. So Nob, if you want to consider it, was probably like the South. They had a lot of churches, a lot of priests. And David ran to this priest called Ahimelech. And so he had requests. He went there. And, and of course, we're going to see that David wasn't so good here. Because as we've just read in the first, he runs to Nob... And then he sees this priest, and the priest inquires in verse 1, he asks, them, he asks David a question. It says, And Ahimelech was afraid when he met David, and said to him, Why are you alone, and no one is with you? Now, David here could be truthful, but he was not being so truthful. Matter of fact, um, he was alone. The priest inquired of it, but he made out to think that there were some soldiers around, and uh, they weren't. And so he asked for a simple request. Can I have some bread? You know, um, lies do kind of catch up with us, don't they? You know, if you think about it, you tell one lie, what do you usually do? You tell a, another. And, and we're going to see here along the way that David kind of digs himself deeper and deeper. But on the funny side of regarding lies, there was a uh, traveler 
who was coming from Mexico and in back into the USA. And as they usually do, there's a customs person there checking all the baggage and making sure they're not bringing something in that's illegal. And so this traveler has this big jug he's carrying. And uh, the customs officer notices this jug and he says, uh, Sir, uh, I've got to ask you, what, what is that? And the traveler looked at him without hesitation and said, Well, this is holy water. And the customs official says, um, a little bit suspicious. He says, sir, can I have that jar? And he takes the lid off and he, he smells it. He goes, this is no holy water, sir. This is tequila. And the guy says, praise the Lord, it's a miracle. <laughs> oh me. <laughs> Lies. Lies and deception. I mean, you look at it. You go on the TV, you see it, don't you? People lying, covering up one lie for another lie. Deception. And it's not much difference from those days to the, to the days we're in right now. And so what does David do? In verse 3, he says, he asks a request, a simple request, but we see there's complications with this request, and we'll see that in just a moment. He says, now therefore, what have you on hand? Anything. Basically, he wanted food. He was on the run. He was hungry. Well, I think if we're on the run and we're hungry, we're going to ask for food, right? Well, he did. He said, you got any bread on hand? Five loaves? He knew there was some bread around, but there was a problem. Let's go on. Let's read uh, verse 4, beginning here. It says, and the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread on hand, but there is holy bread. If the young men have at least kept themselves from women, then David answered the priest and said to him, Truly women have been kept from us about three days since I came out. And the vessels of the young men are holy, and the bread is in effect common, even though it was consecrated in the vessel of this day. So the priest gave him holy bread, for there was no bread there, but the show bread which had been taken from before the Lord in order to put hot bread in its place on the day when it was taken away. So what's the significance of this? Let me just say this. The priest was in a dilemma. Because in, in, those, in those days it was common. They call this the bread of presence. And the bread of presence was where you would take 12 loaves of bread and the priest would place it on the table. It was, a, it was an offering to the Lord. And they would leave that bread on the table for a week. And I don't know what the significance of 12. I got to thinking, well, possibly the 12 tribes. Yeah, maybe one piece of bread equaling those, those 12 tribes in symbol, symbolism. There's a lot of symbolism in the Bible as we know. So they would put that bread on the table and the priest wouldn't touch it. It was, it was an offering. But after a week had passed, the priest could actually take it and eat it. After a week. And, and so they would leave that bread there. So here is David. There's no common bread. There's no regular bread. They, they have none except this bread which is given to the Lord as an offering. So the priest has a dilemma. He thinks, okay, uh, either I, I help David with his hunger or I actually violate a sacred law here. So you see the dilemma the priest was in? He's, he's kind of in, in trouble here. But let me just say this. There's sometimes we have to overlook the tradition. Sometimes we have to overlook what we think and then meet a need. You know, we, we can sometimes fall into tradition, can't we? We can fall into things where we know that we have to overlook that to meet a need. And there's, there's many examples I could give you, but, but, but here was the dilemma. Distribute the bread and violate the law or keep the bread and ignore David's hunger. So what does he do? Well, according to the scriptures, he, he does, I think, what his heart is leading him to do. Even after David's already lied, but he never really picked up on this. Because he asked the question, he says, you know, in order for this bread to be received, you know, your men and you have to have kept yourself no relations with women for three days. Now, the, the problem here is, is not so much the fact that it is true that they have, but there was no men. These men were not even with David. David lied again. The men weren't even there. He could have told the high priest, says, hey, listen, I don't even have any guys out here. I'm alone. I'm running. And I'm running from Saul. <laughs> but he didn't. But the priest took him at his word. 
And he, and he took him and he, he said, okay, this is what we're going to do. I, I'm going to give you this bread. So we see that the high priest uh, gives David the bread as long as David gulps it down <laughs> in spite of his lies. But one thing we realize is this, is that we know that God is our provider. And sometimes God meets our needs in very unusual ways, doesn't he? Sometimes unexpected ways. I remember a time when uh, my wife and I, we had struggled, you know, uh, financially in the ministry, young in the ministry. And when we moved uh, from uh, Georgia to Texas, uh, I don't know if I told you this story, but uh, I heard this strange sound on the back of the U-Haul truck, and it was like, rrr, rrr, rrr. I was like, what is that? Well, come to find out, we loaded our car on the back of the U-Haul the wrong way. And we tore up a transmission. We got to Texas. We only had $800 in our pocket and 500 went to a transmission. We were low on cash. And uh, so, of course, we sent the wire back to family. Said, hey, can, can you help us out here? My father-in-law was angry because he's, he's a mechanic. And, well, he's not mechanic, but he, he knew a lot about cars. And he was kicking himself. He said, I wonder what that noise was. And I heard it going, rrr, 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 when you drove off. He says, yeah, that should have told me, hey, flag you down. He, we loaded the car on this wrong. It should have been turned the other way. So anyway, we get there. To make a long story short or a short story long, however you might say, you know, we, we were going through some struggles. I was looking for work. I was stressed out. We moved 830 miles away from home. That was a long way for never being away from home. And we were, we were struggling, but we finally, God gave us a church home and started serving, provided us a house and, um, that the church provided for us while we were there, while we were studying. Both of us were in school uh, studying. And there was a day when, you know, we had some bills mount up, but we... Um, we said that we had our tithe and, and I said, well, I looked at my wife and I said, we're going to tithe first. I know we got these bills, they need to be paid. Some of them are overdue. But we're going to give to the Lord what is His. Amen. We're going to tithe. And I've always believed in this. From my first job that I had when I started working at the A&P in Atlanta, I started tithing when I was 15 years old. And I've never stopped. Because I believe in it. And I know you do. You're faithful. You're faithful givers. You're faithful to the Lord. But that day I just prayed. I said, Lord, you know I've got all these other bills. But I'm going to give you yours. And so we wrote the check out in faith, put it in an envelope, stuck it in my Bible. And I prayed, God, I did what I needed to do. Would you help us, please? Well, this is how God works. In unusual ways, as I got to the mailbox that day, I opened the mailbox and I... I looked inside and I pulled and there was an unexpected governmental check from the IRS. That doesn't happen, folks. IRS doesn't send out checks. But there was one in the box and I opened it up and, and, and I couldn't believe it. It was three times the amount that we wrote for that tithe. Amen. And you say, that was a coincidence. No, it wasn't. That was God's working. And you say, well, you could have just stuck the check and not paid it. But the thing is, I would have missed the blessing. I would have missed the blessing because I was faithful. God blesses us when we're faithful. And so God provides. He's our provider. He provided for David here. David needed food and the priest came through. He came through. But let's go on now to verses 8 and 9 because David has another request. And David said to Ahimelech, Is there not here on hand a spear or a sword? For I have brought neither my sword or any weapon with me because the king's business required haste. So the priest said, The sword of Goliath the Philistine whom you killed in the valley of Elah, there it is, wrapped in a cloth behind the epod. If you will take that and take it, for there is no other except that one here. And David said, there is none like it. Give it to me. Well, here we go. He's already lied twice. Why not just make it three? He lied again. He needed that sword to protect himself because he knew Saul was on his trail. 
He needed protection. So he moved from bread to blade. And guess what? The high priest came through again. He knew. I don't know that he knew what was going on. He didn't because David didn't indicate what was going on. But he gave him this sword. But it wasn't just any sword. It was a sword to remind him of a day where he defeated this giant called Goliath. It reminded him. Isn't it interesting that sometimes we need reminders in our life to remind us of God's faithfulness? Here he went from slinging a slingshot around to, to knocking Goliath out with one stone. And all of a sudden, I believe, when he had that spear in hand, when he had that sword in hand, it reminded him of that day of God's faithfulness to him. And sometimes I believe in, in struggles, we forget God's faithfulness. Sometimes we need reminders of God's faithfulness in our life. And when I believe when David held that sword, I believe maybe even a tear came down in his eye because he remembered, all of a sudden he remembered, God has been faithful to me. And here I have lied three times to a priest. And the three times that he had met my needs. God's faithful, isn't He? In days of desperation, in days of difficulty, we all need reminders of how God has been faithful to us. And David got one. But let me bring this all full circle here. You see, David lied three times, and that was not good. But he did do one thing right. He sought refuge in the house of God. And I believe that's just, as, that, as Robin just saying in this place. See, we don't have to be just in a church to find God, do we? We can find God in a, in a living room, in a house. We can find God out under a shade tree in a park somewhere. I know for most of us, we, we found Christ, we found God in, in a church. But it doesn't necessarily mean that's where you find Him. God is everywhere. But the most important thing is that God is here. Amen? God is here. David, I believe when he held that sword, he realized that God was here. And that God cared about him more than anything. So to the spiritually hungry, the church offers nourishment. In church, we find the truth, God's Word. We find love. We find encouragement. And we find prayer support. That's what the church does. We love each other. We encourage one another. We pray for each other. That's what the church is. That's who we are. As we reach out, as, 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 we, as we pray and as we encourage, to the spiritually hungry, the church offers nourishment. I want to read some passages out of Romans. These are wonderful promises. In Romans 8, 38 through 39, it says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created things shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? That's powerful. That means nothing, nothing can separate us from His love. Satan might try to convince you of that, but he's a liar. Because nothing will separate us from that love of Christ that is in us. If you had that time in your life where you asked Jesus to come in and save you, and to be your Lord and be your Savior, and you've given your heart and your life to Him, there's nothing that can take that away. You belong to Him forever. That's a wonderful truth. To the fugitive, the church offers weapons of truth. In Romans 8.28, it says, And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. Now, does that mean that everything's going to come up roses? No. Some people kind of take this verse out of context. Like, all things work together for the good. Sometimes the good that God allows may not be good to us. It may be a struggle but sometimes God allows these things to happen. Why? To bring us closer to Him. To see that our dependence, sometimes we get so self-dependent on ourselves 
that we forget who God is. I pray we never do that. You know, through the good times, things are going well right now, but what happens when the things don't go so well? God is still there. God still cares and God still loves. So in spite of David's lies here, he ran, he sought refuge in the house of God. And see, David did receive bread and blade. But the church offers us both. God's word that nourishes us and equips us. You see, David was running from trouble. But he did seek refuge. He sought it in the Lord. So today, brothers and sisters in Christ, in the, in the trials and the things that we're seeing, you turn on the TV and it's so depressing. I hear so many that say, you know, I don't even watch the news anymore. I can't. There's always bad news. Something bad is happening. And it is. But to know that in our times of trouble, we can run to the arms of Jesus. And He's there with His arms spread out wide. Saying, come on. You know, a lot of times when I'm um, doing some services, and I, I did a service, I get calls to do services for families who don't have necessarily churches or pastors, and I, I preached a service for a Japanese Christian woman this week, this Friday. And a um, small gathering, family, a son, his wife, and some others, probably about eight or nine that were there. But one thing that I always say is, say, Lord, wrap your loving arms around this family and let them know that your presence is there and real in their life in this time. And I believe that's what God does. Call out to Jesus. Cry out to Jesus. But don't wait just in the times of troubles and trials and struggles. But cry out to Jesus every time. God, I need you. In my good times, in my bad times, in every time. God, I need you. And He is there. But we have to cry out to Him. We've got to, to depend on Him. We've got to place our, our trust in Him. And knowing that He is not going to ever let us down. I know. I see the struggles. I see the trials. We're going through some of our own in our family. But I know this, and I believe this, that God is there. He's with us. And He's with you. So in those times, just smile and say, God, I know you're there. I may not be able to see you physically, but I know you're there. Why? Because you're here. You're in my heart. And wherever we go, he goes with us. Hold on to that. No matter what the struggles and the trials and the things that we go through, hold on to that, knowing that he will never leave you nor forsake you. He loves you. He loves you. Let's pray. Our Father, we do, we do face days of desperation. We do face days of difficulty. But Lord, we know this one truth, that You never leave us nor forsake us. That You stick closer to us than a brother. You're there for us. And you say to cast our cares upon you because you care for us. So Lord, my prayer today is the brothers and sisters in Christ that are gathered here today, that they'll remember that truth. No matter what they face, no matter what they're going through, you're there. And you love us. So Father, now I just pray we go out encouraged. We're going to go into a world this week of people who don't really understand this truth. But we as brothers and sisters in Christ believe this truth. We know this truth because this truth lives within us. So Lord, I pray when we have opportunities to share it, we will. We'll say, I don't understand why you're having to go through what you're going through, but I know there's a God who loves you and cares for you. Some people need to hear that. So Father, now I just give this time of invitation to you. Lord, if there's some that are hurting, that need prayer, Father, I, they can come down here, they can kneel at this altar, or you can pray right where you are in your pew to say, Lord, I'm going through some hard times, but I turn it all over to you, Father, because I know that you care for me. But if you want to come down for prayer, 
we're open. If you want to join this fellowship, you're here today and you want to be a part of this church and you have not become a part of this church as of yet, but you'd like to, you can do that right now as well. Whatever needs you have, would you come? And we just pray all this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Stop.